Hey, great morning, great morning. Oh, this verse right here, Isaiah 43, 18, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I needed to see that. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday. We made it another day. Thank you, Lord, for another amazing day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I've been struggling a little bit. I do, I can openly admit now that I do have the tendency to become depressed and shut down and close off. And I'm really having to focus on the source of this depression. And I'm also having to understand that I have to use my own advice. We cannot allow other people to take us into a state that we do not belong, that God does not want us in. No person, including ourselves, should be able to allow us to go down. We need to be nicer to ourselves. We need to keep commitments to ourselves. And to be quite honest, I mean, while I sit here and I can say I do keep commitments when it comes to, you know, this part of my day and exercising and those things, I don't always keep commitments when it comes to ridding myself of toxic people in my life. And then I start feeling bad. Why did I let myself go back? But immediately then again, I have to come back in and say, wait, 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 wait. I didn't let myself go back. I became aware and I'm allowing myself to feel. And now I have to use the tools to continue the journey because the journey is not linear. No journey in our lives is linear. And we are silly if we think that's what it's going to be. It doesn't matter if it's health. It doesn't matter if it's weight loss. It doesn't matter if it's mental weight loss. It doesn't matter if we're healing old scars. None of that matters because it's never going to be linear. And that's okay. We might backtrack a little bit, but we can get back up. And the worst thing we can do is blame ourselves. Because there's enough people out there doing that. There's enough people out there looking down on us and, and saying mean things to us and being unkind. There's enough people doing that. We cannot do that to ourselves. I am committing to myself that I will not allow anyone to talk down on me and for me to accept it ever again. If they want to do that, if their narcissistic controlling behavior wants to allow them to do that because they're in a hurt space, that's okay. I, I will not allow it to defeat me or to pull me back. It 
if there's anyone in your life who makes you feel bad about yourself or who is playing mind games with you, let them go. I mean, don't even look their way if you see them. Because now that you've learned the lesson, they become the most unattractive, just ugly person. And that's not physically unattractive. I mean, mentally, like, you know where they are. And for me being an empath, it's like, I care because I know the pain and I know the hurt and I know that I have said unkind things in the past, but I'm not there anymore. And I refuse to let someone who does not want to change I refuse to let them back in. And I will do whatever it takes to make sure I stand my ground. And it's not easy, especially if it's someone that we really care about, like a good friend, or like someone that we, someone who, who became like family it's not easy to let them go. It really isn't, but here's what I will say, and I know this all too well, and I'm learning it more and more every day. You can't fix anyone else. And I'm telling this to myself, Jody. you can't fix anyone else. You can't, you can only, only work from within, within yourself. It's really hard to let people go when you care about them. But if they don't care about you, move on. Move on. You deserve so much better. <sighs> and again, I'm telling myself this. Isaiah 43, 19, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Doesn't matter how bleak the situation looks. The faith we have will keep us going through the bleakest, through the doesn't, it doesn't look like anything good can come out of this situation but our faith just keep that faith on my whiteboard i have turn this down a little bit proverbs chapter 3 verses 23 through 26 says then you then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet do not be afraid of sudden danger nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes for the lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught oh lord 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 <sighs> thank you lord lord thank you so much for allowing us to be here today thank you for your grace and your mercy and thank you for continuing to show us and reveal things that we need to know about ourselves in order to truly combat everything that's coming at us every moment of every day. Lord, we honor you and we trust you to help us and to guide us through these situations and, and to remove, just remove people out of our lives who don't belong. Lord, let us see with new eyes. So even if we see the person who wants to hurt us, 
we don't see them. We don't really see them because you, we only see you. We only see people who are walking this life out with you and everyone else can remain unseen if they desire to hurt your people. If they have to say things Lord, help me. If they make themselves feel better by being hurtful to others, Lord, we ask that you remove them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read one more verse. It's Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 34. It says, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I don't know how much of this was recorded for the YouTube channel. Um, this is, you know, the stuff that we encounter when, when we're dealing with technology, but no matter what, I just hope and pray that I can encourage someone out there to not only just turn their life over, but just to start taking the steps to let go of depression, of anxiety, of whatever is holding them back. Because I know all too well that those things will hold us back. And we can have our moments, we can have, you know, half a day if we need it. But if we stay in that place of sadness and depression for too long, we'll never be able to get where God wants us to be. So we have to learn how to submit and turn our lives over to him and trust him that he's got us. And it's not easy to do that sometimes, but we have to trust it. We just do. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of my journey. If you're out there. I struggle. I really do. But this right here helps me stay grounded and it really helps me throughout the rest of the day. And if in sharing that I can help someone else, then that's what it's all for. So that's why I do it. But thank you for allowing me to be me. Thank you for allowing me to show up imperfect, genuine, totally transparent, not put together at 5 a.m. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to just be. Because for so many years, I put on a facade and I tried to be something that I wasn't because I didn't want people to really know the pain that I was going through internally. And honestly, I wasn't even ready to face it. So I didn't even know what I was going through internally. But I appreciate those of you who are staying in my corner. I appreciate you more than you know. And for everyone else, if you don't have a kind word to say to me, don't even waste your breath and speak. And I'm saying that in the most loving way possible. <laughs> Lord, help me. I'm trying to move away from being the hurtful person that I've been in the past because I was in survival mode 
And when we're in survival mode, we hurt other people. And I don't choose to be in survival mode anymore. I don't have to survive. I'm conquering now. I'm in, I'm in conquer, overcoming, post, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> It's like coming out of, you know, post-op surgery, right? Post, post whatever situations. Overcoming and conquering is what we have to focus on because survival mode only gets us so far. It'll work for a little while until it doesn't. All right, today is May 31st. <clears throat> it says Jesus was homeless by choice. I was afraid to have my glasses out for this. Bear with me. Perfectly imperfect. says, Jesus was homeless by choice. Luke chapter 9, 57 through 59, it says, as they were walking alone, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to even lay his head. He said to another person, come follow me. If Jesus were living on the earth today, he might visit a homeless shelter to sleep. During the years of his ministry on the earth, Jesus had no permanent home. In other words, the Lord of all creation submitted himself to dependence on human hospitality. Realizing what Christ gave up out of love for us motivates us to follow him, not for what we'll get out of it, but for the joy of being close to him. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, today got a little bit more intense than I, I ever think that I'm going to be on here. <laughs> but when I'm going through things, I just share them because I've masked enough in my life and I don't need to do that anymore. I don't choose to do that anymore. So whatever you're going through the day, today, whatever you encounter, just remember you're not alone. Take a moment for yourself, allow yourself to be, give yourself some grace and remember that it's gonna be okay, no matter what it is. But you can't control other people and you can't fix anyone else. But you can go deeper within yourself. Start there. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.